let me ask you, um, because you did mention in the past that Easy E was one of, if not the only guy to ever come back and, and hang out with you. You know, after this whole thing, did you, I'm assuming you guys, you know, reconciled? Did you guys talk about it? You know, how did he start coming back around? Um, he started coming back around. He never, he stopped for a while. And then when Yellow started doing this porn at the studio, he would come around. He would come around before then sometime and just kick it with me because my, you know, where I live at, it's kind of quiet. And uh, he would always, uh, he knew he could meet the security guards over here and tell a lie where he was that night to his girl. Mm. And, you know, use my house as his, you know, I was my house out and, you know, have uh, his bodyguard, the two twins, meet him over here. They roll out for them. I live, I live right by the freeway. So it was always easy access. No pun intended. All right. So I, I just think, man, it, uh, he, he would come by and actually he would just, he was, we never fell out. We, we never had a crossword. Okay. Only time me and Easy had a crossword was when we first met at the club and he wouldn't get dressed right. That was the only time we ever had any kind of real because we, you know, he was a, he was a smooth dude. Now I used to get on his ass all the time about putting my phone in his goddamn back pocket. You know, back then I bought a nine a nine hundred megahertz cordless phone, man. Oh man, okay. Nine hundred megahertz cordless phone go all over the go all over the back. That was the whatever. shit. You can go everywhere with that joint. Come on, man. You know, people don't understand the power of cordless phone back in the day. <laughs> we live. I was born with phones hung on the wall. Okay, and they have a cordless phone that you can put in your back pocket and walk around the house in. I mean, that was unheard of. So I, I was a player. I had to have I had to have all the latest phones. I bought this 900, me- 900 megahertz phone, man. And uh, easy with all his girl had him checking in on a regular basis. You know, his girl had him on a real low, real short leash. Con- contrary to mm-hmm. popular belief, he was she had him on a real short leash. Not saying he was no buster. But she, you know, he had played his, he, he done his dirt, put it that way. And every time I go look for my goddamn phone, he got it in his pocket. They give me my goddamn <laughs> phone. Or he'd have it off the hook so long, the battery would die. So these are the kind of little bullshit issues we had. We never had no real, we never had no argument, no fight, nothing like that. We, in fact, all the years, I was telling somebody the other day, all the years and all the crews I've had in my house, all the bloods, all the crips, all the essays. I never, everybody respected me and respected my house, man. I never had issues with anybody like that. You know, every once in a while, the guys would have a problem with each other. I tell them, we, we over here for one thing, to make music and make money. If, if, if you ain't got part of that, get the fuck on. And that pretty much shut it down. Okay? Yeah. Can you see that? You always a people? Say it again? I can't see the chat room. Can you see the chat room? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you here. Let's see, let's see. DJ Wick says, what up, Lonzo and Dusty? Teddy Styles, shout out, Long Beach says, uh, Lonzo, when was the last time you seen or spoke to Easy Alive? I, I think we talked about that, but go ahead. I mean, you know. I to Easy Man about, uh, about six weeks before he died, okay? I spoke to him about maybe six weeks before he died. Um, he was over here. Uh, you know, he was, he, he, you know, he would just, he would pop through or whatever. He was that, he was admin. Um, the other has stopped doing his, his start doing his start doing his porn someplace else, but Easy still will pop through from time to time. And I think I saw him about six weeks before he died, man. It, you know, he was healthy as me and you, man. You know, that's why I always had my doubts from day, day one what his what his uh, cause of death was. That's just me. Mm. Yeah, we don't want a big brother coming down on us, so we probably shouldn't speak on that too much more. Yep. <laughs> but um. Reaction Jackson says, was Jerry Heller really Dr. Dre's manager before Jerry met Easy E? Uh yes, because uh Jerry Heller was record crew's manager. That's why. Okay. Got it. Jerry Heller Jerry Heller, uh at first I didn't mess with Jerry Heller. I didn't mess with none of them because um my good friend Etta James had warned me about of uh, Jerry's business partner, Maury Alexander. Hmm. Maury, uh, and Maury was into the blues game long before uh, before him and Jerry got together. And Maury didn't have a good reputation. And uh, um, when uh, I told Etta James that I was working with Jerry Heller, and she says, ain't that ain't his partner, Maury Alexander? And I'm like, yeah. 
I don't know about Jerry, but Maury ain't, you know, he ain't to be trusted. And she, you know, she said some things. And I told him what she said, and he was going to sue her for defamation. I said, if you do, I'll never work with you again, okay? All she did was tell me what, told me what gave me a heads up, okay? I told Jerry, and Jerry told Maury, and I told, you know, uh, well, Jerry, Maury is very upset behind that. He's thinking about suing her for defamation. I said, if you do, we're done, okay? We're done, okay? Etta gave me one of her... Um, her uh, good old um, country slash backhanded uh, warnings, okay? Like, they die with dogs, you get fleas, okay? Oh. Uh, <laughs> like that, okay? If you swim, yeah. you might get bit by alligator, okay? Uh. Um, you know, shit like that. So that's what she told me about Maury. You know, uh, if you swim with if you swim with uh, alligators, you might get bit or some shit like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, Jerry didn't like that, and uh, but nonetheless, it didn't hinder us from working together. Got a couple good questions in here. Um, oh, yeah, we have a few good questions. I like this, actually. You guys are writing the show for us. Thank you. Mr. Jody419 says, Lonzo, how did you learn the business side of music so well? Um, I listened to you... old dudes, man. I listened mm. to old dudes. I, I was always... Except for Etta. Uh, yeah, except, for, <laughs> except for Etta. Etta, Etta was an old <laughs> girl, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't know, I knew I didn't know anything and I would be stupid to try and act like I knew something. And at one point in time, I was dating this young lady and her daddy had an independent record label. And the dude, I, I go by to meet the dad. I'm all got my chest all stuck out. Pop, she tell her pops, this is my new friend, my friend Lonzo. He owns his own record company. He got the wrecking crew, blah, blah, blah. And pop say, oh, he, he pops started giving me a little a quiz. Well, who you publishing company? I don't know. Uh, how, how many records you sell? I don't know. Um, uh, you BMI? I ask out. I don't know. This is what the, this is what the dude told me. He told his daughter, Shell, come get this dumb motherfucker. Get him out of my house. He's too got to have a record company and not know what's what going on. And her dad, who was still a friend of mine right to this day, he's like 78 years old, still a friend of mine right to this day, uh, Swamp Dog, took me, him and his wife, took me into their wing and gave me a lesson in record 101 that I could, you can't get it USC, UCLA and no other, no other U, uh, SC school. And wow. he explained some things to me about not only record industry, but about life. And it made a lot of sense. Okay. And one of the things he told me was that, um, uh, don't worry about Michael Jackson, Prince, Madonna, none of them people get you a lane that works for you and stay there, okay? And he said, it's a whole lot of money between where Michael Jackson sits and where you stand at right to this day. He says, his his stage name is Swamp Dog. He say, you ain't never heard of me, have you? I say, I sure haven't. He says, I do, I sell about 20, 30,000 records a year. I only do shows uh, on the uh, other side of the Mason Dixon line, which is pretty much down south, I charge between five thousand and seventy five a hundred dollars a show. Okay, I say I sell my own records directly to the store. To the I make my own records and sell them directly to. The and this store. is the eighties. This is the early eighties. We're talking. Okay. This is amazing hearing this. So he says I make about three to four hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. <sighs> and at that time, he living he living in Woodland Hills. Two story house, beautiful house, swimming pool, yeah. balling, something I would aspire to. And he says, um, you have to understand, he said, it's a whole lot of artists. I said, make he said, making the kind of money I make, even if I have a bad year and I only do two hundred thousand, I'm doing what I love for a living. Okay. <laughs> I love singing, I love recording. And he says, if I mess around and get a hit record, that that makes it even better. As long as I keep new product in the pipeline, I'll always be okay. And people have sampled this record. And like I said, we talk on a regular basis still to this day. We've been friends since uh since the mid eighties. And uh wow. he all if I have a question or a problem, he always answers the phone. And old man Ducey from the Dude Old Music Center, he owned a record label. Okay? He owned Dutone Records, but he had he had um uh Red Fox and Richard and Willie, the bunch of cat, bunch of, he had a comedy label. That's cool. And he taught me distribution. Okay. 
and I, good Fred from um, Fred, good Fred oil. You know, this dude taught me distribution. He said, man, distribution is distribution. He said, he said, whether you're selling records or hair care products, don't make no difference. Somebody got to, you got to get it to somebody to sell it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And so once you understand, uh, you sometimes as a young man, shut the fuck up and listen, shut this part up, open these up. Okay. Cause what happens is you're going to, you're going to hear shit that cats, you, it, there's shit that people will tell you. They might not tell you and tell nobody else or they, you can't read it in a book cause they can't put it in a book. So it's things that I can tell you people right now about different people. I would never repeat on the show. I couldn't. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, you, when you know certain things and you've been, especially when these guys, these guys came up in the sixties and seventies, they was doing it a whole lot different from what we was doing. Okay. So for these guys to be successful through the sixties and seventies, yeah. and for me to be, have the opportunity to sit with them and listen to these professors of life, uh, gave me an insight that most cats didn't have. 